and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another video on refraction. Today we are studying the astigmatic dial. In order to understand the astigmatic dial properly, it is very important for us to understand five important concepts. So let us understand them one at a time. To understand the first concept, I want you to remember the video on Sturm's conoid. So what did I tell you from this diagram that? the vertical meridian was more curved compared to the horizontal meridian. So the vertical meridian was actually focusing much sooner compared to the horizontal meridian. And when the vertical rays were focusing, what was the image that we were getting? We were getting a horizontal line. However, when the horizontal meridian was actually focusing, the image that we were getting was a vertical line. So this is only our first concept. That is, the vertical meridian focusing will actually make a horizontal image and the horizontal meridian focusing will make a or give a vertical image. Now let us come to the second concept to understand the astigmatic dial. Now in the first concept what did I tell you that the vertical image is actually being formed from the horizontal meridian right and the horizontal image is formed from the vertical meridian. Now, these both the images are abnormal. Why? Because they are not forming on the retina. So we have to move these images onto the retina. Now, if we want to move this vertical image onto the retina, which meridian do I have to correct? I have to correct the horizontal meridian. Okay. Why? Because this both I have drawn in red because the vertical image is coming from the horizontal meridian. Similarly, if I want to correct the horizontal image that means if I want to bring this horizontal image onto the retina which meridian do I have to correct I have to correct the vertical meridian so this is our second concept that is in order to move the horizontal image we have to correct the vertical meridian similarly in order to move the vertical image onto the retina we have to correct the horizontal meridian now let us talk about the third concept. Now if I have to move this vertical image onto the retina, which meridian do I have to correct? I have to correct the horizontal meridian. Now if you would remember from my video on astigmatism, whenever we want to correct the horizontal meridian of an eye, we have to give power where? Along the horizontal meridian, right? So if the horizontal meridian is weaker, we have to make the horizontal meridian powerful. How do we make a particular meridian powerful? By giving a cylinder, right? And I told you that the power and axis of a cylinder are always opposite. That means if I want to correct the horizontal meridian, I will give a cylinder whose axis will be actually vertical, okay? So since the horizontal meridian is at 180, the power of the cylinder will be at 180, but the axis will be 90 degrees. Similarly, for the vertical meridian, that means if I have to correct this vertical meridian or to say if I have to move this horizontal image onto the retina, I will be using a cylinder which power will be acting across the vertical but the axis will be actually horizontal. So what is the third concept? The third concept is correcting the horizontal meridian means that we have to give power at 180 degrees that is along the horizontal meridian but the axis of the cylinder will be at 90 degrees that is perpendicular to the power similarly correcting the vertical meridian which is the vertical which is shown over here the 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock meridian we have to give power at the 90 degrees but the axis which will be written in the prescription will be 180 degrees before we go to the fourth and the fifth concept let me tell you what is briefly the astigmatic dial right so the astigmatic dial is nothing but it's a test chart which consists of radially arranged lines right so these radially arranged lines can be arranged either as a sunburst so they can look as if the rays are coming from the sun so it's called the sunburst type of astigmatic dial in which usually six type six lines will be present and they will be at 30 degrees apart from each other okay or they could be arranged in a way of a clock okay clock hands or it could be just two lines at 90 degrees to each other so that is called a lancaster cross now let us try to understand the fourth concept suppose this is a patient in image one 
and you can see that both the vertical and horizontal meridian are actually focusing in front of the retina. So this is a case of compound myopic astigmatism. Now, if this patient, if you actually remember your sterm sconoid, at the anterior focal line, he's getting a vertical image and at the posterior focal line, he's actually getting a horizontal image. Now, which image he is going to prefer or which type of image he is going to see more clearer? The answer is the image which is closer to the retina. So here, the patient will see the horizontal image more clearer because the horizontal image is more closer to the retina. Okay. Now, similarly, this patient over here, the second patient, you can see the vertical image is closer to the retina. Therefore, he is going to see this vertical image more clearer. Now, what happens in an astigmatic dial is that whenever a person is actually shown this astigmatic dial, he is going to see one line which is darker and sharper, right? And which line is the darker and sharper? And over here is actually having the horizontal image more closer to the retina, okay? So what does it mean? It means that he is going to see everything as if it's a horizontal image. Even if you show him a circular spot of light, he is going to actually see it as a horizontal image, right? And this happens at a very microscopic level. That means if we were supposed to show him a sterms, uh, sorry, an astigmatic dial like this, which so we can imagine this cross to actually have millions of circular points like this, okay? And all these circular points are going to be interpreted how they are going to be interpreted as a horizontal line by this person. So how is he going to see the vertical line? The vertical line will be seen as a collection of horizontal lines like this. And how is he going to see the horizontal line? Horizontal line also is going to be seen as a collection of the horizontal images. But what happens with the horizontal line is that there is a overlap between these horizontal lines, right? So because there's an overlap at this horizontal line, he's going to see this horizontal line as darker and sharper. However, there is no overlap along the vertical line and that is the reason he is not going to see this vertical line as darker sharper. So the, the line of the astigmatic dial, which he sees the more clearest, it means that that is the image which is closest to the retina. So if a person comes and tells you that I am able to see the vertical line the most clearer, that means the six o'clock and 12 o'clock line, what does it mean? It means that the vertical image is more closer to the retina and the horizontal image is actually in front of the retina, right? So this is your fourth concept that the darker and the sharper line of the astigmatic dial will tell you the image which is present closest to the retina. And last but not the least is the concept of fogging and sturm sconoid, which is the fifth concept that you should be very thorough with to understand the astigmatic dial. If you're still not clear with the concept of fogging and sturm sconoid, I would suggest you to go and visit my videos on fogging and sturm sconoid. Now let us go through the steps of the astigmatic dial test. Let us start with this patient who is actually having compound hypermetropic astigmatism. Okay, since both the images from both the meridians are actually being formed uh, behind the retina. So the first step to begin with the astigmatic dial test is to measure the visual equity for distance, right? So we are going to make the patient read the Snellen's chart and get the best visual equity that is about six by six using what? Using the spheres only, right? So at this point, we are not supposed to use cylinders. We are only using the spheres and using the spherical correction, we will get six by six on the Snellen's visual chart. The next step, of the astigmatic dial test is to apply adequate fogging lenses to both the eyes, right? I already told you in my previous video that fogging is nothing but fogging is applying the convex lenses in front of the eye in order to relax the accommodation of the eye, right? So, and also fogging is nothing but artificial blurring. So how much blurring we have to do in this patient? We have to blur to about six by 18 right? So for in the first step, 
we are showing them 6 by 6 i mean we are bringing them to 6 by 6 by giving them certain spherical correction and then we are going to put fogging lenses which is nothing but the plus lenses and drop their visual equity from 6 by 6 to about 6 by 18 and this is called fogging by fogging to 6 by 18 now let us see what happens when we actually fog this patient right so initially our patient was having compound hypermetropic astigmatism now we have put a fogging lens in front of this eye and what have we done we have not just relaxed the accommodation we have actually pulled these two focal lines to front of the retina also right so both these focal lines from behind they have come in front and now the patient has been converted to compound myopic astigmatism right so the next step is we are going to ask the patient to identify the darkest and the sharpest line on the astigmatic dial right now in this case since the horizontal image is closer to the retina and the horizontal image is coming from where from the convergence of the vertical rays that means from the vertical meridian right so in this case the horizontal image is close to the retina and therefore the patient will tell you that the darkest and the sharpest line are the horizontal lines that is the three o'clock and nine o'clock line on the astigmatic dial after the patient has identified which is the darkest and the sharpest line on the astigmatic dial now we are going to do is we are going to add a minus cylinder with the axis perpendicular to the darkest and sharpest line now let me explain it to you in detail now what we want to do in this patient is that we want to move this vertical image which is present here backwards so that it collapses and forms a point image at the place of the horizontal image okay so what i mean to say is if this is our horizontal image and this is our vertical image i want to move this vertical image at the place of the horizontal image so that instead of the two focal lines now i will get one single focal point okay now if you remember from the concept 2 what did i tell you if i want to move this vertical image behind i have to put cylinder at the meridian from which this vertical image is coming so where is the vertical image coming from the vertical image is coming from the horizontal meridian right so if i want to put power along the horizontal meridian where will the axis of that cylinder be the axis will be at 90 degrees that means the axis will be like this and the cylinder the cylinder will be put like this okay and the axis of that cylinder will be at 90 degrees okay so this is what is meant by step 4 that we have to add a minus cylinder with the axis perpendicular to the darkest sharpest line right so if you want to remember it in a, uh, in a more easier way i would tell you another uh, method also so suppose this is the line which is the most darkest that is the horizontal line right so the horizontal line can also be written as three o'clock to six o'clock line right so in order to get the axis of the correcting cylinder to move the anterior focal line towards the posterior focal line what we have to do is we have to take the lowest number and multiply it with 30 right so in this the lowest number is 3 so we will multiply it with 30 so we will get 90 degrees okay so this is the axis of the correcting minus cylinder okay which will move our anterior focal line towards the horizontal focal line so basically we are doing nothing but we are collapsing the sturm's conoid right and why we are choosing that axis for that you need to know this concept so therefore by adding this minus cylinder what have i done i have actually collapsed both the focal lines to a focal point this is yellow one right but still you can see that the patient at this point still will see blurred vision why because it is still focal the focal point is still present in front of the retina the next step would be to move this focal point on to the retina and how are you going to move that focal point onto the retina by giving another minus lens why because the patient is now myopic and how do you correct myopia by giving the minus lenses so what happens is now that this after giving a, another minus lens okay what happens is that this focal point will be shifted onto the retina so this is the final step 
of our astigmatic dial that is we have to add more minus sphere until the best visual equity on the Snellen's chart is obtained. So this image actually shows that finally this was our fogging lens okay the initial plus lenses that we have added then we added a cylinder minus cylinder in order to collapse the sturm's conoid and we got a point image or the point foci then we wanted to move the point foci even more behind onto the retina so for that again we added a minus sphere okay and finally we got the best visual equity okay of the patient and this was the final step because we have now brought the point focus onto the retina and the patient can finally see six by six so in the final step we will do one more thing which is called reducing the fog so what is meant by reducing the fog so suppose we actually gave the patient initially about say plus three diopters of fogging lens okay to bring his best corrected visual equity to 6 by 18 right and what did we do in the end we added about minus 2 diopter in order to bring the image onto the retina so finally what sphere am i supposed to give the patient the sphere that i'm supposed to give the patient would be plus 3 diopters minus of 2 diopters right so ultimately i am going to give him y plus 1 diopter sphere right and what cylinder will i give him the cylinder that i'll give him is this minus cylinder that i calculated from the astigmatic dial test now let us quickly summarize the astigmatic dial test so initially we have this is our astigmatic dial uh, chart which is present on the snellens chart and this is our patient who is actually having the compound hypermetropic astigmatism the first step that we do is we will introduce the fogging lens or the plus lenses in front of the eye and try to pull these both focal lines in front of the eye. Now the patient is converted into compound myopic astigmatism. We ask the patient which line do you see sharpest and the clearest uh, or the darkest, right? So the patient will tell that he's seeing the horizontal uh, image or the horizontal line on the astigmatic dial as the most sharpest and darkest. What does it mean? It means that the horizontal image is closest to the retina and the vertical image is actually away from the retina. If the vertical image is more away from the retina, it means that the horizontal meridian is weaker, right? Now, in order to correct that horizontal meridian, okay, and in order to move this vertical image backwards, what we do, we add a cylinder with the axis present at perpendicular to the darkest and the sharpest line, right? So, we will take a cylinder at 90 degrees in this case right so what happens when we take the cylinder at 90 degrees that is perpendicular to this darker sharper line this anterior focal line will go and fuse with the horizontal foc horizontal image right that is the posterior focal line so what do we get now we get a point foci but the point foci is still present in front of the retina that means we have to introduce another minus sphere so this minus sphere will bring it onto the retina and finally we will reduce our fogging lens and make it less plus how by subtracting the minus that sphere we have added from this plus sphere and ultimately the patient will be able to see six by six and we know how much spherical we have given and how much cylinder we have to give this patient so this was all about astigmatic dial test i hope that was useful thank you and have a nice day